right, here we go with the color oops. I'm gonna show you what's in the box. There's two bottles and an applicator tip. And as simple as it can be, you're just gonna pour the contents of number one into number two, which I'm going to show you. There's the tip. And in the room, I have two fans going because this product smells like rotten eggs. It's not a super strong smell. When you get a really good whiff of it, it's pretty disgusting, but it was manageable with the two fans going. Every now and then, it would get too close to my nose and it would just be disgusting, but you know, we make it work. So I'm just pouring it in. I don't have my gloves on yet. I probably should have. Here, oh, it stinks. Really gross, but my nose got used to it. Now I'm gonna put on some gloves. These are not the gloves that came with it. I'm not a fan of the kind of gloves that come with. They're too loose and I didn't want all that crap on my hands. So those are just regular old medical gloves that um, we just happen to have on hand at the house. So here we go. I'm gonna shake this puppy up. I put the cover back on. I like to shake it and occasionally tap it against the palm of my hand just to loosen up anything that might be at the bottom. Wow, that's intense. And we're smiling, we're dancing, we're shaking. Um, one thing that I was told in all the videos I watched is that this product is very runny and watery, which is true, and I didn't want to waste it and make a huge mess. So I have a brush and a little Tupperware, and I'm going to start out applying it with the brush, and in the end I'm going to pour the rest back in the bottle and apply the rest of it that way just to make sure I didn't run out. I did get this as a buy one get one free at Ulta for $13.99, but I still didn't want to use two boxes if I really didn't have to. I got a nice big whiff of that, so disgusting. Um, be advised, your bathroom and hallway and hair, everything's gonna have this smell for a little while. Okay, the next thing I'm doing is brushing my hair. I had to show you guys my cute brush. It's from Forever 21, in case you're curious. It has flowers on it. And today I did wash my hair this morning in condition and I just let it air dry. I was home all day so I didn't style it. That's how it looks. And I'm going to put it halfway up just so I can have the bottom part first. I've heard that because you tend to have um, more heat coming out of your head at the bottom, it can process a little quicker. So I'm starting with the underneath part just to give it kind of that advantage. Okay, we're wrapping a towel around just to protect that lovely Walmart tank top that cost me $2. And here we go. I'm going to fast forward and just kind of walk you through what it is I'm going to do here. So I'm just using a brush. I'm starting at the ends just like I would with any hair dye. There's no color to this product. It's just like a white liquidy, it almost looks like watered down shampoo. So I'm just applying it to my ends and I'm kind of working my way up a little bit knowing that my ends are where I have the most hair dye. Just to note, my hair was ombre before, so I assumed that the bottoms were also going to get a little lighter than the rest because from what I understand, Color Oops takes you back to what it was before you put the hair color on.
I've been checking this hair a few times and I'm ready to pour the rest in the bottle. I've done all I can with the brush and now I'm just going to apply it like I would any other hair dye with a bottle applicator. It is pretty drippy and runny so that's, that's why I started out with the brush. Um, I just didn't want it running all down my face and down my neck and all of that. So this method seems to have worked really well. P.S. Part of my stuffy nose that is allergy season here, so I apologize for the sniffles. So I'm just kind of checking the front, the back, the sides, and making sure I'm saturating every piece because it would really suck if I got to the end and saw there was a patch of hair that wasn't covered and have everything else come out nice in just this one stubborn patch. I've done that before with hair dye and I'm not willing to do it now. This is too serious getting all of my parts around my hairline. Some people say you shouldn't put it at your roots. Um, my hair dye is fairly fresh, so I did need to get right up to the root. It didn't bother my scalp at all, so I wouldn't be too concerned. There's no bleach or harsh chemicals in this product, so it's not something I was really concerned about making contact with my scalp. My towel keeps falling off also. It might have worked better if I had just been wearing a yucky t-shirt, but I couldn't find one at the time. Alright, so now we are taking off the gloves. I keep gagging from the smell if you can't tell. And that is the lovely plastic shower cap that came with the color oops. And I am just putting that over my hair, tucking it under, and leaving this puppy on for 20 minutes. Oh yeah! All right, and here we are with a little bandana that just helped it stay in place so I could fold some laundry and it wouldn't move around. Now I'm putting on the little cheap gloves that came with the product because in this case, I'm not really in danger of getting it all over my hands. I'm just kind of undoing this little uh, contraption on my head. So I'm taking off the shower cap and checking it out. You can see the ends are a little lighter. Hard to tell if it lightened up too much just because it's so wet. Um, but the next step is to take a shower and rinse this for 20 minutes. I listened to a podcast and kind of guesstimated how long 20 minutes was. I did hop out and check the time one time mid-shower, and I shampooed about four times over that 20 minutes, just to be sure. So here I am, right after a shower, I put on a fresh, clean black tank top, and um, that's what it looks like. It's lightened up quite a bit. You're not supposed to blow dry it just because your hair needs a break. It does kind of feel like straw. I won't lie to you. All right, guys. So this is the finished product after I finished using the color oops. I did rinse for 20 minutes and this is how it came out. My original plan was to use this hair dye afterwards. It's Garnier Light Intense Auburn for darker hair. Um, and before I did that, I knew I wanted to do a protein filler. This is a neutral protein filler you can get at Sally Beauty. This bottle was $6 for, maybe it was like $6.79 I think for four ounces. And um, on my way there, I was letting my hair air dry with the windows down. And I kind of loved the color. It's kind of this like honey brown and the ends where I used to have ombre are a little bit lighter. So I think I'm just going to leave the color for a little bit and see what I think over the next couple days and maybe just hang on to the hair dye for another time. Um, I, I'm planning to use the protein filler still and I'm going to mix it with this replenishing pack by Ors. Uh, this stuff is amazing. It definitely will help repair the damage. Um, the color oops doesn't damage the way bleach might, but my hair does feel really dry. I shampooed it probably four or five times while I was in there and I just felt it getting more and more coarse. So I did use a conditioner. Let me show you the shampoo and conditioner I used. It's this brand, um, the Soapbox brand. I've talked about this stuff before. Worked really well. I used that coconut shampoo and conditioner. And this is just what my hair looks like air dried in the car. Um, I haven't styled it or anything, so we'll see how it looks once I do that and just how the color kind of is distributed in the natural light and all of that good stuff. Um, but all things considered, I think it turned out really well. I think the color's even. It definitely took that dark burgundy out of my hair. And I'm overall really impressed with this color. Oops. I did pick up mine at Ulta for $13.99 and it was buy one get one free. So I have another box of it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it at this point. Um, I might just 
you know, hang on to it and see if a friend needs it. But I would say this is a good product to try at home. I think that the risk is pretty low. All the videos I watched were success stories, um, with the exception of somebody I saw who had silver hair with purple and blue and some kind of really difficult kind of hair dye. I forget what it was called, but it was a particular type of hair dye that this is not made for. But for just regular, you know, box dye that you've done at home, this really does the trick. If you guys have used Color Oops or a similar product, let me know in the comments what your experience was. I'd love to hear your story. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Jill's Closet 00. And thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.